From the near Millis Millis, our M-I-L-L tour takes us just south of Worcester to a once booming mill town that, upon gaining its independence from Sutton in 1813, was very nearly named Moscow. Historian Frank Gagliardi explains. Well, at that time, Napoleon had been ravaging all of Europe, and he was defeated at the Battle of Moscow. So there was much sentiment all over America and the world for naming towns and cities Moscow. Enter Caleb Burbank, a wealthy mill owner who influenced the debate with this peculiar story from his youth on a local farm. Caleb Burbank stood up and said, listen, one time my father purchased a cow from an old farmer they called Old Morse, Old Morse. And that was the most honoriest critter I ever saw. She would kick me whenever I tried to milk her. He said, I'll be darned if every time I think of my whole town, I'm going to think of Old Morse's cow. He said, no, Milbury. So that's how we got our name. Many of the town's namesake mills are long gone, but the one on the town's seal, s and Spinning Mill, still going strong. We make yarn for Major League Baseball. All the baseball. All the baseball. Whoa! One reason John Dernley is still in the game, MLB uses a ton of balls. The average life of a ball in a Major League game is four pitches. That's it. Rawlings manufactures between one and a half and two million balls a year. The town of Milbury can also claim a few baseball players, most notably pitcher turned broadcaster Ron Darling, who helped the New York Mets defeat his hometown Red Sox in the 1986 World Series. Less painful to recall, perhaps, is the legacy of Asa Waters II, a wealthy gunsmith who spared no expense when building the most iconic house in town, the Asa Waters Mansion. It was made to make a statement. There was nothing like it in central Massachusetts. They brought in Baltimore pine, they brought in Italian marble, everything was carted in and wagon load. There were no railroads at the time. So it was a three year process. The house was based on hospitality and they had galas, they had balls, their Christmas Eve ball is what they're particularly famous for. Almost 200 years later, the mansion is still making memories. So we have our annual chain of lights, which is big in town. A lot of family portraits taken here. For some older photos and memorabilia, take a walk up the spiral staircase to the Milbury Historical Society Museum, where the town's military pride and a presidential connection all on full display. William Howard Taft, 27th President of the United States. We call him Milbury's president. He was the great-great-grandson of Asa Waters II. He actually visited our town twice when he was president. There aren't many towns and cities that can say that presidents visited them. Modern visitors with a sweet tooth should find their way to Timothy J. Sweets. It is a classic vintage bakery that when you go in, the case is full and looks delicious. I hear a lot of customers say, oh, I had this when I was a kid. Oh, look at that, it's a devil dog. We have cookies, cookie sandwiches, cupcakes, whoopie pies. Owner and decorator Timothy Benoit learned his craft at the apron strings of his mother, who suffered from a rare disease. It's called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and she didn't have as much capability to move around, so she would bake. And I quickly realized that's definitely something I had as a passion, but it went on the back burner when she started declining in health. Sadly, Benoit would lose his mother, but a conversation with his partner would lead him back to the passion they shared. I said, what am I doing? Why am I working corporate? I'm not happy. This isn't me. And he looked at me and said, why don't you open a bakery? A year later, Benoit would find himself looking through the window of a bank for sale in Millbury. I literally looked in the front door window and could picture what you see today when you walk in. And I said, I want this location. Benoit's ability to see the possibilities and transform them into stunning edible designs has kept him very busy, even through COVID. We were able to actually get over 400 orders of custom cakes from the time we opened until today. In one day, I can have anywhere from a first communion to a gothic-themed wedding cake. And um, <clears throat> other things. Those are things that people feel comfortable coming to me and requesting it because they've been turned down by other bakeries saying, well, it's inappropriate. I have no morals when it comes to cakes. He does, however, have very high standards. 
baking the world a better place means that when someone comes in here to get one of our baked goods, they're going to leave here with a smile. Like that one. Yeah. Back to the Asa Waters uh, mansion. As you heard, it didn't have the benefit of a railroad stop for supplies, but it was believed to be a stop on the Underground Railroad. Yeah, evidence include a ladder, a hidden ladder from the basement to the fourth floor, a hidden room on the second floor, mm -hmm. and the Waters family actually had a known friendship with Abby Keller Foster, who was an abolit abolitionist in central Massachusetts. All right, coming up, a little Millville trivia. Do you know the answer?